Hey guys, I'm Jennifer Marshall with Red Carpet Report and we are at Paramount Pictures for the Veterans Day Got Your Six event. Thanks so much for joining us today at the Got Your Six event. Can you talk a little bit about what this event means and, and your connection to veterans? Uh, free breakfast. Ah, just kidding! Wait, I actually I could do my own um, rim shot. Free breakfast. Okay, now I'll tell the truth. My friend's a member of the Academy. He told me about it. And people don't know this, see, the closest I ever got to military service was I bought a pair of pants at the Army Navy store. However, all my relatives, all cousins, all fought in uh, Vietnam, Korea, and World War II. My mom was a spy during World War II. She was in the OSS, which became the CIA in the late 40s, you know. My dad fought in the Philippines. I have two cousins, well, one cousin, one uncle, who got Purple Hearts. That's the war uh, award you don't want. You know, my cousin Elliot got the heart and he died a hero, and my uncle, hi, got the Purple Heart, but he lived. He had shrapnel in his leg his whole life, you know. Uh, Elliot was an amazing hero. Landed his plane after D-Day, Battle of the Bulge, picked up soldiers, and then he got shot in the head by a German soldier because if you kill a pilot, nobody's going anywhere. So the, the German sniper got him. So, you know, and, uh, and he didn't even have to fight because he was the only descendant of, of his mom and dad. So according to that Sullivan Law or that Saving Private Ryan Law, he didn't have to fight. He could have been in the back lines, but he chose to fight and chose to be a, a, a pilot, and it cost him his life. And the wording from Truman is incredible. You read what he says about altar of man's freedom, and it's incredible. So, so, so you come from a background of a lot of family and friends who are military. Did any of them? them? Every uncle, every grandfather. My grandfather was in, uh, in World War I. All my great uncles and uncles were in World War II. My dad was in World War II. You know, so yeah, my whole family, we, we didn't believe in the Vietnam War, so I never served, and my brother never served, because it was a terrible war. It's the only war that America ever lost, you know. So, um, so what are your thoughts on, when you were growing up and you had all these military people around you, what, did you ever hear um, complaining from family members that they were not portrayed accurately in the media? No, because back then, I don't think it was a whole different ball game. Virtually, all, my generation, our parents were almost all in the war. I mean, in World War II, everybody had to go. So you wouldn't get that kind of attitude. And when they all came back, they all had jobs. And it was a whole different ball game. I think Vietnam, and maybe even Korea, started off that bad attitude because those were wars that were pretty much a boo-boo. You know, especially Vietnam, complete disaster. So uh, I, it, I, there was no real stigma about soldiers coming home. I think Vietnam, they got a real deal. They go into that in that Tom Cruise film how the, the Vietnam War veterans really got a raw deal because they were spit at when they came back, they were given a bad, you know, bad looks, they were, they were picked on really. When the Vietnam, Vietnam veterans came back, and also most of them hate Jane Fonda and always will, you know, Hanoi Jane, was it Hanoi the World War II? She was, she was almost hung as a war criminal. So that's serious stuff to demoralize troops. So anyway, so... Uh, yeah, they all went, so it was a different kind of attitude back then because everybody had a fight. Yeah, no, I would have I'd had a fight too if I was born in that era. You know, what choice do you have? And that's the one war we really had to win. Because imagine if we hadn't, you know. It'd be a different place, wouldn't it? Yeah. So would Ron Jeremy advocate for a vet being hired on one of his sets? We have plenty of them. <laughs> yes, I've had a lot of veterans in my movies. Uh, I don't know if they women. We even had a girl, yes, a girl named Donnie was her name, yeah. We had one female who was, uh, was in the Army, and I, we've had a couple of... Uh, in fact, one of my good friends is Gary Lee is his name. He has a company called SlowBabes.com, SLO is for San Luis Obispo. You could see a commercial we did with Chuck Liddell from you know, The Ultimate Fighter, and, uh, and he was a Navy SEAL. He, and he, 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 he brags as the only Navy SEAL to do adult movies. And all, he goes every year to that uh, Navy SEAL get-together down in San Diego at the Coronado Hotel, where they shot Some Like It Hot with Marilyn Monroe. And some of these Navy SEALs meet there every year. And they all, hey, Gary, what you been doing these days? Because he's doing adult movies. So. <laughs> so we have a few veterans that are in adult films. Veterans are everywhere. I don't think they want us to <laughs> broadcast this fact. I saw these veterans here. Yeah, well, I was what talking. Say? The veterans doing the movies. Where? Where? I was talking about behind the scenes, Ron. But you, oh. you blew, you blew it wide open. There are plenty of them. Uh, there are plenty of veterans behind the scenes still an adult. No, we, of course we we hire them. Who wouldn't? You know, it's great that they have this. I mean, it's really a very clever idea and very smart that they're making this known. And I really think, maybe I'm wrong, 
that Vietnam put some of the stigma on it. You know, because guys coming home from, from Afghanistan and uh, Iraq get the utmost respect. I don't think they're being, dis I don't see as much discrimination as I saw when people came home from Vietnam, and that was my era, you know, Vietnam. They really, I'm telling you, they really got a raw deal. These soldiers were spit on, they were, they were all disgusting, it was a doves versus the, the, the hard hats. We had pickets when I was a kid in high school, you know, saying, get out of there, you know, and it was just really weird, like, you know, we we're, were putting these guys in harm's way, and then they kept saying that we wanted to deprive them of their equipment and, you know, while they're overseas. And we'd say, no, you blithering idiot. We're sorry you sent them there in the first place. But once they're there, you got to support them, obviously. Not going to leave an American soldier out in the cold. You know? And I, I think now American Americans have changed their thinking, too. Maybe they don't support the war, but they support the troops. Of course. That's exactly correct. And one thing is a note. They never brought it up, but they didn't get political today, and they shouldn't. But uh, Afghanistan was pretty much okay on both sides of the coin. Democrats and Republicans were in favor of Afghanistan, but they supposedly attacked us first, 9-11. Iraq was a clear delineation of Democrats did not want it, Republicans did. And I think it wound up being a humongous disaster. I'm sure a lot of these guys would agree with me. I won't go into politics, but some of our biggest enemies were because of equipment that we left, you know. So I think Afghanistan, both sides of the, of, of the aisles agree. Uh, Iraq was a deline delineation. Republicans wanted it, Democrats hated it. I really think that's, and it's true, if you look at the, what they say in their speeches and all, you know. Well, thank you so much for your thoughts and your time today and for coming out to support veterans. Thanks for watching. If you like this, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more interviews, and comment below with your favorite branch of the military. Clearly, it's the Navy. Bye, guys. For more information on Got Your Six, go to gotyoursix.org. For more information on how to hire veterans currently working in the entertainment industry, visit Veterans and Film and Television at vftla.org.